You glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Say amen. 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 Uh, After the service, I know everybody's anxious to get home and whatever their day is going to bring, but maybe just hang around a minute or two and, and visit with these visitors that have come. How far is New Zealand from here? Twelve and a half hours. That's by plane. You have to go. Yeah, from New Zealand to L.A., L.A. to St. Louis. How far is South Africa? I know how far Kenya is from here. South Africa would be about be farther. So they traveled, and then Peoria. Man, that's. Um, Peoria is a nice town, by the way. Um, but anyway, just say hi to them, visit with them. Uh, they want to see more than the back of your head. Okay? So anyway, just say hi to them and welcome them here. Make them feel at home. And uh, this is what I think our church does best. is Just make people, especially visitors and that, just make them feel at home. Make them feel welcome. I appreciate that. All right? Take your Bible. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 if you would. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I have it up on the screen. I dare you to read it. I had this on my mind all week. And when I sat down to kind of put it together... Um, what I what I had in mind. I, I mean, I laid the scriptures out, and when I was looking at the passages, um, God just kind of laid a few burdens on my heart, a few burdens for this church. I don't pastor that church, this church over here. I don't. I, I'm right here, and um, I know this church. I know. The good things that God has done through us here. And um, I also know some of the rough spots and the not so good things that we have amongst us. All of us. Okay? And that's what happens when you are around people long enough. You, you find them out. Okay? You figure them out. And to me, the true test of a Christian is not a contest on how good we are, but it is loving one another, whether you know them or not. Okay? What do you think is easier? Loving somebody you don't know or loving somebody you do know? Because if you really know them, there's things you're going, Ugh. Okay? That was that was that was me being nice. Okay, um, you love one another. You care about one another. You give to one another. Okay, I like this. I don't know if it's getting on your nerves or not, but when we have our opening prayer in this church in this service, I don't mind us getting with one another and praying with one another. Okay? I don't mind that at all. Now, if that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's fine. I mean, not everybody's the same. And I'll probably talk about that. But people come in this place because they need to be here. Okay? I woke up 5.30 this morning. I did not feel good. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I just won't go. Okay? I think it, but I'm needed to be here, and I'm not sorry that I came, okay? So I want that experience for everybody that comes in here, even if they only come in here one time, is to at least walk out and know that they have been with God through His Word, they have been with God's people, okay, and that they know it. Jesus said, they shall know you. How? 
That's one of the things you can say. Yeah, that's true. By their love for one another. The disciples. They, should, you should, they, they shall know you are my disciples by your love for one another. Okay? And that's because this is a body. Okay? This is a body. And I want you to, there's so much wisdom in this, and I don't, I don't even know where to start. So I'll just start reading scripture, and I'll just ask God to guide me. There are some things in my mind that I, I want to say this morning. I want to get to them, and they're going to be a little heavy. Okay? This heavy on me, and then they're going to be a little heavy on you. All right? If you'll let God lay, lay it on you, it's going to be heavy. You're going to have to carry, so you're going to have to think about some things. Think about your life. And to think about how you are. Okay? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12. This is a great passage. Great passage in the Bible. For as the body is one. And he's talking about your, think about your physical body. For as the body is one and hath many members. And all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. Now let me stop right here and let me let's see, does anybody know how many bones there are in your in your body? How many bones do you have? Two hundred and eight bones in your body. Okay? Did you know that not one of them is alike any of the others? Now, I've got two thigh bones. You can say, well, yeah, these two thigh bones here are the same. No, they're not. You cannot take a left thigh bone and put it on the right side. It don't fit. It don't work. The left thigh bone is designed to do its thing. And it cannot be replaced by any other bone in my body. Even the doctors, they, they do this where they, I saw this years ago, they, a guy lost his thumb, he needed it, he was a farmer, so they cut his big, his longest middle toe off and sewed it onto his hand so he have a thumb. It's still a toe on his hand, okay? It's not a thumb. It kind of worked, but it's, you know, when he does this, it just doesn't look right. Okay? It, it's, it just doesn't work. The same thing applies. If, we just, if we're just going to deal just with bones, everybody in this room has their own unique function. Their own unique thing that God made them. Made them a certain way. Made them to do a certain thing. They're not designed to do other things. Maybe they can do it, but they're not designed to do it. They're designed to do what God made them to be. You are that member. You can't be like somebody else. You know what that is? That's jealousy. That's emulation, the Bible says. Emulation is one of the things of the wickedness of our flesh. We want to try to be like everybody else. Don't be like everybody else. Be like God made you to be. Think of our nation as a body. We are many members, many states, in one union. And I like our, I like our country. But we are a diversified nation. People come from all over the world to be part of this country. And as long as they come here to be part of this body, it works. And not everybody that we see out on the street has to be like everybody else to be an American. This, this is how we were founded. Okay? Many states, one union. It is a body. What's happening is there are people who do not like what we stand for what we have stood for, so they want to sever the parts of this body, and that's what's going on. It's working. What did Jesus teach us about that? 
A house divided, a nation divided against itself. Cannot stand. Can't do it. And if God doesn't step in and intervene, we're going to fall as a nation. Because our enemies are coming to separate us all, divide us all up, get us to hate one another. Am I right? So, you listen to your Bible this morning. Verse 13. How many, how many Holy Spirits are there? One. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Whether we be bond or free. And have been all made to drink into one Spirit. Verse 14, for the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Does that make it true? No. Now let me, let me illustrate this. Some would say, some would look at other people and they would say, well, I wish I was like brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so, they're just closer to the Lord than I am. Now you stop and think about what you just said. There's only two types of people in the world, saved and lost. And if you're saved, you have the same one spirit and one baptism and one faith that everybody else has. If the faith that you had was good enough to save you, is that not good enough faith to have for everything else? Amen. I mean, that one faith, that one, you believed what God said, and it regenerated you and made you part of the body. Is that not good enough? And, the th and, and I just think about this. You could think that my shoulder is better to the body because it's closer to the head than, say, my little pinky toe here. But my little pinky toe is attached to the same head that my shoulder is. And when I breathe, the oxygen goes to my shoulder just like it goes to my pinky toe. And when blood pumps out of my heart, it goes to this foot just like it goes to this arm. This foot gets the exact thing that it needs just like this shoulder does. So why be jealous of somebody else in the church? Hey, this, now this is, this will, you can use this for your family. Brothers and sisters get jealous of one another, don't they? And even in the church, brothers and sisters get jealous of one another, don't they? Why? Well, I think God likes you, or Dad likes you more than he likes me. I think Mom gives you more than he gives me. Parents just love children. Grandparents love grandchildren. It's really all there is to it. Amen? If God loved you enough to send His only begotten Son to die on a cross for you, isn't that love enough for you? So the problem is not how much you're loved, but how much, I don't know how to say this, Maybe you're just wanting more than really what you're supposed to get to begin with. Because every part of the body gets a different measure, but it's the same spirit, same blood, same oxygen. Same. When I eat, that food goes to the parts of the body that needs it. You wouldn't believe. I have craved sugar this week. And man, I've been just eating sugar, sweet cereal and stuff like that. And I, I don't know, maybe it's because that's healing and it just, I don't know, maybe I just needed more sugar. Because I don't think I've really gained much weight this week just laying around, but I've just been eating sugar like crazy this week. Okay? Well, parts of my body needed it. And I guess the rest of the body needed it too. But I don't, when I eat, I don't tell my stomach, hey... This only goes here. Nowhere else. This Bible's good, right? Verse 16. 
And if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? The whole body were an eye. Where were the hearing? If the body, if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. So, you see this hand? Who put it there? God did. See this knee? Who put it there? Okay. See this mouth? Who put the mouth on the head? God did. I'm going there. Okay? I'm going there. Because not everybody should be doing this. God has set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased Him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. Like that little toe I was talking about. What does your little toe do for you? That's what gives you balance and the able to, ability to stand and walk. Yes? Bingo. Euthanasia and eugenics. I hate it. And I hate anybody that's for it. Like aborting babies. It makes me angry. Let's kill them because they're really not useful anymore. Who said so? Who said so? And I want to say to the seniors of us, you have a greater place in a body, a church body, than you can possibly fathom. Just because you can't get out and step and fetch it like you used to, you have a greater place than you can imagine. One of the shames of my past was I was going to disregard my elders here in this church. And God chastened me for that. And I know of church after church after church that has run the old people out of the church because they weren't going along with the new stuff that they were bringing in. Those old people are the ones who knew where all the old paths were that we're supposed to seek out and walk by them. Amen? They're the ones who are supposed to be, they're the ones who are going to pray. They're the ones who are going to know the Bible. They're the ones who are going to know what's right and wrong because they came from a time when people actually practiced it. Ian, if I get tired, you come up and finish the sermon for me, all right? Um, verse 23. Those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. I want you to think about your marriage. I want you to think about your family. I want you to think about this church. You can apply this even in business. If you... If you have people that work for you, or you are part of a workforce, everybody has a place in that workforce. And not everybody can do what everybody else can do. But they all have a unique place and can be used and should be used. Okay? Um, I, I, I got a lot of things to say. Let me move on. Um, where was I? Verse 25. That there should be no schism in the body. You know what that is? That's cutting something off. That's taking part of the body and cutting it off. And cast What happens to a member of the body that gets cut off? It dies. It won't live. It won't make it. 
There's wisdom in that. Listen to your preacher. Because I thought about quitting. I thought about getting out of church. I thought about just separating, pulling out, leaving. You'll die without a body. You need a body to be attached to, to be a part of. Amen? And you can be the greatest, you can have the greatest hands in the world and be the ugliest person that ever carried hands around. Amen? And the hands don't go. I'm sick of this guy's face. I comb his hair, make him look good. Never works. I'm out of here. It don't work. You cut them off, they'll die. Cut the head off. Cut the head off, what'll happen? You, you, listen, there's wisdom in this. You think about why in the last days the Antichrist beheads people for the faith of Jesus Christ. Cut that head off, they're dead. Okay? There should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Did you, did you get that? Here's, I mean, I mentioned this, but here's what made me think of this. Is that, I mean, I've had surgery before, and I know how it works. First time I ever had surgery, it, it shocked me how tired I was after the surgery. I, I mean, I couldn't, even, I couldn't even hardly talk. I was so exhausted and wore out. I had no strength in my body whatsoever. And it, it occurred to me that my body was healing itself. And that this week, my legs, my knees are shaking right now. My legs, my arms, the other parts of my body are very feeble right now. It's because they have been all week long donating all that sugar, all that food that I've eaten this week. They have been donating nutrients, blood, oxygen, everything else that my body needs to heal this wound in my back. They've been sacrificially donating of their own, giving of their own cells so that this one part of the body could be better. There is deep wisdom in this right here. Apply that in your family. Because what we want to do take people in our family that we're mad at and cut them off. Now I will say it is better to cut off a right hand or pluck out an eye if that endangers the rest of the body. Am I right? Doctors do it all the time. It's called amputation. Sometimes it has to be done. But not every time. The more people you want to cut out of your life, the less you are of who you were meant to be. You think about that. Guys come back from war with no legs. And they'd give anything to have their legs back. They miss them. You see what I'm getting at? You take that and you apply that in your marriage or in your family or wherever you work or here. I want to say this. Just like me with what's been going on in my back, my body has made the head aware of things that are not right. You ever got that? Because my body is telling my head, we're in, we're, we're in trouble. Things are not right here. Okay? Things are not right. When you have the symptoms, George, when you have the symptoms, you can ignore them for only so long. 
And then you've got to go, the head makes the decision to make the body go see the doctor to find out what's going on. And the doctor then, watch this now, he exposes areas in our bodies that need some sort of medical attention. Whether they just need a salve. This is the balm of Gilead right here. You rub that on what hurts, I promise you it'll make it feel all better. That's good, isn't it? Or maybe you just, maybe you need to, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Maybe you need some medication. Maybe you need to swallow something a couple times a day. Or maybe the doctor's got to go in and wound you so you can be healed. That's biblical, by the way. Okay? Job chapter 5, you go read it. God wounds so he can heal. And it's just like surgery. Things get busted up. Things get tore up in our bodies. And our body is telling our head, this needs attention. And if we're not going away, it needs to be fixed. Or you're going to be miserable. Now I can tell you, having pastored, all these years, I am miserable when I know that people in this church are not doing well. It affects me. My wife will tell you that. It bothers me. It gets me. My joy comes when I see people living under the Word of God, living in prayer, walking in the Spirit, loving one another, God's blessing, God's using us, God's glorifying this place. I mean, I'm just, I'm just like, man, boy, pastoring is great. This is easy. Okay? And then every now and then, something in the body, it goes bad. And what happens is God awakens the head, which is me. Now, this I'm not, you guys know me, I don't glorify myself or my position. I never do that. But there is only one head in this church. Just like there is one head on your body. A two-headed person is an abomination. It's, an, it's not normal. It's not right. One head. Just as the overall body of Christ has one head, and that is Jesus Christ, and we are His body. Does not our Savior grieve when part of the body is not doing well? Do you think Jesus, do you think it bothers him? Sure it does. Apply that to your marriage. Guys, listen to me. In fact, turn to Ephesians. Ephesians. Let's, let's, put this on a, let's put this on a business level. Anybody that works for a company, anybody that is a boss, or anybody that is a worker under a boss. Okay? If guys go out, Jared, if guys go out to do a roof, and one guy comes in Monday morning hung over. Jared, you should have seen Jared, he went... See, I'm thinking like Jared's going, I'm, I'm hoping Jared's not going, yeah, that was me last Monday. I don't know what. I know it ain't you. But when the guy comes in on Monday morning hung over Jared, what do the other guys have to do? Pick up slack for him. Why? Because there's something more important than one individual person who works for that company. The what is more important is what the head says is important. That day, during those hours, the head, there's one boss in a company, okay? And that head says, this is what we're going to do, this is how we're going to do it, and I need everybody giving everything they got. We got to get this job done. You guys want to get paid? If I make money, you make money. I am not a socialist. Or a commie. 
If you don't work, starve. Thank you. Appreciate that. Now, let's apply it to our homes and our churches. Ephesians 5.22. See this pinky right here? Who put it there? Right? I'm setting you up. Who made you a woman? God did. Who made you a man, Sterling? God did. Thank God it wasn't a surgeon. There's an article on Drudge Report right now. A person now has had their third gender reassignment surgery. Going back to a woman from being a man who started out as a woman. It's crazy. Wives. Look at your Bible. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the... He's the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church, you, don't, you have no idea how bad I'm shaking up here. Okay? Because I got, I got to say stuff. The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. What happens when the head's cut off? Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in most every thing. It's not what it says, is it? You're not going to let me get away with that, are you? Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Where'd God put the mouth? Who's supposed to feed the family? You know what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians, don't you? If a man won't work and make his own bread, he's kind of like a reprobate. We've lost that in this country. We used to be a nation of workers. We used to be a nation of guys who knew how to put it out. The whole world looks at America and just laughs at who we are now. A bunch of cupcakes and snowflakes. Don't want to work, amen? Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Where, where, does, where does the air go in? The head. The food goes in the head. The water goes in the head. Guys, if you're not taking care of the needs of your family, something wrong. Now, I may not be picking on somebody here. There's a thousand people listening to me right now. There may be some worthless deadbeat sitting watching this, mad at me right now because I said what the Bible said. But it's true. It's true. And I'm going to tell you something. Mike Hoggard used to be as guilty of this as anybody else was. Because I let my wife go out and earn the living. And it wouldn't right. God had to correct that. Verse 26. And he might sanctify and cleanse it uh, with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle. Or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives. You ladies, I want you to pay attention to how much time Paul spends dealing with the wife versus how much time he spends dealing with the husband in this passage. Who gets it? Who gets the brunt of the, of the doctrine here? The head, guys. The head does. When we get our head right, the body will follow. You know how they tell you? 
if you would start eating right, your body would feel better, right? Where does that go in? The head. It's the head that feeds the body. It is my responsibility to labor in the Word and, and let God deal with me and let God get me and whoop me and chasten me and, and conform me to His image because this body needs it. Needs it bad. God's made us aware in this church of some areas that we need physician to work on. Hasn't he? So ought men to love their, old, love their wives as their own body. See it? You see it? See how simple that is? He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. This cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. It's a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Now, I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to talk to you. Head to the body. Okay? Guys, there are some areas that we're not doing right. We're not doing right. We're not undertaking the role that God gave us as men. We're not feeding our families spiritually. We're not nourishing and cherishing our own body. Our wives, our children, our grandchildren. We spend time in our hobbies, in our things, in what pleases us, and we don't give of ourselves to our children. And you working all day is not enough. You got to spend time with your wife. You got to spend time with your children. You got to pray for them. You have to give them of the word of God. That's what makes a good man. A man who quotes scripture is a man. That's a real man. Right, guys? Ladies. I know you ladies. I love every one of you. I love every one of you the same. But you're not doing right. You don't treat your husband right. You don't talk to him right. You don't reverence him. You don't honor him. You will not submit to him. And you're not right. Don't make me say that again. It's not... There are no women on the board of trustees that govern the affairs of this church. Do you know why? It is not their place. There are no women apostles, no women bishops, no female writers of the Bible. That is not, there are a left thigh bone on the left leg only. They have their place. It is an awesome place. It is a wondrous place. It is a glorious place. And the head will glorify 
his bride in due season. But this church does not tell God what he ought to be doing with himself. This church pleads to our Savior and our husband about its needs. But we wouldn't be caught dead talking to our God the way you talk to your husband. And husbands, your Savior, Jesus Christ, is not lusting after Mystery Babylon, wanting some other woman. He's not. Neither should our men. The greatest responsibility is on the men because they are the head. You don't like how your family's turning out? What did you feed them? You don't like how things are going? What did you not cherish? What did you not praise? What did you not honor? We're not right. Now, children. You're not the head. You don't lay out rules for negotiation with mom and dad about how things are going to go your way. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You're not the head. You're not going to be the head. You want to be the head? Move out. Pay your own bills. Do your own thing. But how dare the children of this church treat their parents the way I've seen them treat their parents here. Ain't right. This is not what I wanted to preach. I was going to give you some easy, good stuff. And God wouldn't let me. It's time that we go see the doctor. The head has made that decision. Because the head knows there's things in the body that are not right. And the head can't fix it. Only the physician can. Okay? I love this church like I love my own body. I love my family like I love my own body. Now, I may not be the smartest head, best looking head, wisest head, but I am the head. And the head has a say. And there's no doubt even my own body, my own injuries, it was a result of my head. Ryan, if I'd have known I was going to live this long, I'd have taken a whole lot better care of myself. I'd made some foolish decisions. And I can see the scars of those decisions in my body. I can see it in this church, and I can see it in the, even in my own family. And I think that's what hurts the most. But we need to go see the doctor. Amen? Office hours are 1225 Sunday to 1 o'clock. And the office is up here. So the head says, we're going to the doctor today. 
What does the body think about that?